In this video, I'm going to show you how to beat the island map on Nintendo Switch Arc Survivor the Vault, but it also works for all platforms. Before we get into the guide, I want to talk about the Ultimate Survivor Edition of Arc Survival Evolved on the Nintendo Switch, which is currently live. It changes the base game completely, makes it so much better. The performance is way better than what it was before. If you played within the last four years, playing now is a completely different case. The game is actually completely playable. I played from the beginning up until the last boss and everything worked fine. Along with all the visual improvements and performance enhancements, we actually are getting all of the major maps to the game, to Nintendo Switch Arc Survival Evolved. Scorched Earth is already out right now. Aberration is coming, I assume, sometime in December, which is pretty cool. And then we're getting Extinction, Genesis 1 and 2. And if you've bought the Ultimate Survivor Edition, you also get a game called the Dinosaur Discovery which is kind of like Ark, but for kids, it's it doesn't have any of the violence or you know the, the difficulty. The controls are really simple. It's basically there for your, your young kids to kind of like, you know, play around, see the dinosaurs, learn more about them, have information. Are they herbivores? Are they carnivores? What do they eat? What do they look like? Where they are or where they were first found around the world. So all this cool information for your kids to kind of play Ark, you know, without the, the goriness that we play Ark like. So you get Dinosaur Discovery if you buy the Ultimate Survivor upgrade or if you just have Ark Survival Evolved in its base form. Now, if you don't currently own Ark Survival Evolved, you can buy the Ultimate Survivor Edition with the base game at $49.99. If you already own Ark Survival Evolved on the Switch, you'll be able to purchase an upgrade that is going to cost you $39.99. This collection also has a few quality of life improvements that make it so much better than other consoles when you play this game. Like there is a virtual cursor on the screen that you can move around to kind of act as a mouse. You have a reduced hotbar to eight slots so that it works better with the controller. There is a, a, a few different changes to like how the controls work adapted for the Switch and for controller specifically, which is really cool. The radial wheels has also, has also been changed and the UI has been updated for better visibility. Overall, it brings a really good experience to the Nintendo Switch for playing Arc Survival Evolved as if you were playing on any other console. So thank you Studio Wildcard for sponsoring this video. And now let's talk about different resources that you can find on the island map here. So you can see my map here, it has a bunch of pins of all the resource locations. So I recommend you do the same. When you do have the map open by pressing the minus key, it will open up the map. When you press Y, you'll be able to add a marker to the exact location of the different resources nodes so that you can find them again later on if you wanna keep harvesting them. So for metal, obsidian, and crystal, these two locations are really good for it. So as you can see, it's 42 and 38 and 36 and 59. As you can see on the screen, to find locations, mainly on top of the mountaintops, mountaintops have a lot of metal, crystal, and obsidian in general. There are some other easier locations to get to for just metal and crystal, if oh, those are the only two resources you're looking for. So these four locations on the map right now, you can use these coordinates that I'm showing on screen to find mountaintops where you can find metal and crystal together. Okay, so cementing paste is a nice one to get from beaver dams. You can also craft it yourself if you want to, but it's always easier to get it from the beaver dams. And the reason is, is when you find a beaver, a giant beaver dam like this, you can see there's a lot of cementing paste in there. And that is just, that is just ridiculous. Of course, you're going to want this. So go ahead to this location on the map to find them. Another important resource that is also very common on the island map is oil. Now, oil can be found over the ice biome. Pretty much they look like this, these coordinates on the screen, these three different locations. But in general, anywhere near the coast or the beach line of the ice biome is going to have these oil rocks everywhere. And all you have to do is mine them with a pickaxe and you'll get your oil. Silica pearls can mainly be found in the ocean, but an easy way to get them early on is at this location over here on the screen. You can see the coordinates. You'll find them in this little like river thing here. This is what they look like. They shine in the water. So make your way here as soon as you can if you're starting to, you know, work on a fabricator and things like that to get some early silica pearls. Lastly is organic polymer. Organic polymer is a very nice resource to have because it allows you to not have to craft normal polymer and you get it from killing these penguins. Now the best way to harvest these penguins, these kairukus, is when you kill them, beat them with a wooden club. A wooden club will get you more organic polymer than any other tool will get you, so make sure you do that. As for the first artifact cave that we'll be doing is Artifact of the Clever. I do recommend you bring some tools like a GPS to find the coordinates, some medical brews, 
very important because there are bugs in this cave. Bug repellent is really good, as well as antidotes in case you do get poisoned by the onyx, the flying bats. They can poison you when they bite you. I recommend using a bug repellent just before you go in. I recommend you bring a strong small creature like a raptor, dire wolf, or something of that, that kind. Even a baryonyx will be really cool for this. If you really want to be overpowered, a Megatherium would be great because you're going to be using it for most of the caves throughout the game. But at these coordinates over here is where you're going to find the cave. When we go in, we're going to stick to the left. You're going to take every single left turn that is physically possible. You'll find snakes in here, you'll find spiders, and you'll also find bats. Now those things are going to be the pests that you deal with. A Megatherium actually gains a huge buff from killing those and gets an insect buff and makes it really, really strong. So ideally... Having one of those uh, is going to make this cave a breeze. But other than that, the cave is actually quite simple and quite easy. And you just run along the path you're taking every left until you see the artifact in the distance over there. We're just going to go around to the left here. This one's quite straightforward. There's like a bit of a water pool here. You're going to need to jump across, maybe bring parachutes if you're worried about jumping in the water. There are crocodiles in the water. And then you'll see over here, the artifact is on this little bridge. There are some things in this water too. So be careful around this whole area. But this is how you get the artifact of the clever. For the next artifact, Artifact of the Hunter, these coordinates are here where you can find the cave. This cave might be tricky to find because it is in the middle of a forest. So I'm gonna try to show you from above here. This is where it is. It's kind of like in a valley, right? So it's behind those trees over here. I recommend if you're looking for it to approach from this side over here, you'll see there's a cliff over here. Follow the cliff and the beachfront that goes into the valley like this and then you basically find it. Otherwise, you're just going to need a GPS and to come to those exact coordinates. Now, you are going to need a crossbow with some grapples for this, just to make it easier. This one, we're going to basically stick along to the left wall the entire time. If In case you're doing this on the Nintendo Switch, which I assume you probably are, to use the, the thing like this and how to um, like let go, you have to crouch. So you crouch to unhook yourself, right? So shoot button to grab, left trigger to loosen, and shoot button to obviously like pull you in, and then crouch to let go the, the grapple. That's how the grapple works on the Nintendo Switch in terms of controls. All right, so we're gonna follow along the path here and we're gonna stick with every single lift until we get to the artifact. It's super simple. Just follow along with me here. You will get to a point where you can either go left or right. This is this point here, go left. You'll see there's some bugs. You go left again and you'll see there is a drop. Now this is the reason why we have the crossbow is so that you can climb up again. As usual, I do recommend bringing a tame that is small and strong here. A megatherium would be perfect, but you could probably still do it with like a dire wolf or a raptor or a baryonyx that are really strong. But this is where you get the artifact of the hunter. For the artifact of the massive, now this is a cave located at the bottom right of the map. This cave is really long, but the advice I'm gonna give you is gonna make it super easy to do it. You just have to keep remembering where you are. And to do that, uh, first you gotta locate this cave. So it's located right over here. This is what it looks like from the outside, just to give you a, a visual representation of what you're looking for, because it's kind of easy to miss. A lot of the caves are, are really hard to miss. This is a cave with a bunch of insects. You're probably going to come here with a megatherium. The biggest tip I can give you here is you're going to be sticking towards the right side of the cave the entire time. Take every single right turn all the way up until you see the artifact, and that is how you will get there. So I'm going to let this play through because... It's a long cave, you might get lost, so feel free to watch this just to make sure your directions are accurate and you've taken the exact same turns that I have and you haven't missed one. So this is what it looks like. As usual, I do recommend you bring like uh, med brews. Always bring med brews. You might need bug repellent so that the bugs don't attack you as much. The Megatherium will be able to sort that all out. There are onyx and like other creatures in here as well. You will also need a crossbow and some grapples so that you can make some of the jumps here because there are jumps. And if you do mess up the jumps, there is lava at the bottom. So be very, very careful. Just stick to the right the entire way through and you should be fine. So I'm just gonna grapple across here just to get there. You'll you'll see it's pretty much the same thing here. Just, just avoid falling into the lava because you will die and your dinosaur will die if they fall in the lava. So just keep going here. Every single right turn. It's simple. It's clean, it's effective, just every right turn and you'll find the artifact across the lava pools over here. You will need to use your crossbow to get across and go ahead and pick up the artifact of the massive. 
All right, so I'm gonna split up the guide in terms of finding artifacts for certain bosses. Those three artifacts that you just found are the three artifacts that you will need for the Broodmother boss fight. So there's no other artifacts you're gonna need for this fight. It's only those three, and you can basically do this from the green obelisk at those coordinates that I just showed you. So you're gonna to come to this location, the green obelisk. The dinosaurs I recommend you bring to this fight are mainly megatheriums. So I would recommend 19 Megatheriums, all bred, leveled up, nice, good, and strong. These are currently just spawned in, so don't really pay attention to these too much. And I'll also recommend bringing a U-Tyrannus. Now, at later stages, if you have really good T-Rexes, you can also bring T-Rexes. But ideally, the Megatheriums will be a lot stronger for this fight because they get an insect buff. Now, to start the fight in Gamma difficulty, the easiest one, you just need the three artifacts. To start it in Beta difficulty, this is what you need. You'll see there's some dinosaur parts that you will have to collect just by killing those certain dinosaurs around the map, which you'll probably do anyway. For Alpha, these are the resources or requirements you need to start the alpha boss fight. I'm going to just do it in gamma here just to show you how it works. But ultimately, it's super simple. If you have an army of Megatheriums or T-Rexes and your UT Rhinus, you're going to get on the UT Rhinus as soon as the fight starts, and you're going to Courage Roar to, to buff the defenses of your dinosaurs in front of you, basically fill up that bar that is above their head so that they can shine in yellow. And you do this on the Nintendo Switch by pressing in the right Joy-Con. So when you press it in, you will do the Courage Roar, and you will see your dinosaurs, your dinosaurs will glow in yellow, and you'll basically just send them off to fight the spider boss and that is essentially what you do you know like with an army like this this is the strategy you will have beaten the boss super easily if your dinosaurs are strong enough to to do so in terms of the drops and rewards that you get for beating this boss here are the rewards and unlocks in gamma difficulty here are the rewards and unlocks for beta difficulty and here are the rewards and unlocks for alpha difficulty if you beat the boss in those difficulties for the artifact of the brute, you'll be in the middle of the ocean on the middle left side of the map. As you can see here, I recommend bringing a Basiliosaurus that you tame in the ocean. You'll also need scuba gear so that you can breathe underwater, you know, with a scuba tank. And now you're going to go to this location over here, 5310 on the map. The entrance is right at the bottom here. It is a little tricky to see and you have to go straight to the bottom of the ocean at these coordinates here. You're gonna need a GPS to just keep track of where you are because it is really hard to see in the ocean in general on all consoles and also on Nintendo Switch, it's quite difficult to see. So as you get like lower here, you'll see there's like a dock entrance that's outlined there. You can't miss it. Like once you see this, you can see exactly where the entrance to the cave is. This is what it looks like, 5310 on the map and you're gonna be going through this entrance. So in terms of direction, it's gonna be quite simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna swim through here and we're gonna to stick to the left wall the entire time. It's 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 really super simple. Like you're, you, this cave kind of ends up leading to one point anyway, and that's where we're going. So we're just gonna swim along here. I'm just showing you the pathway in case you wanna follow exactly where I'm going. But what I'm doing is following the left wall for every single turn that it takes. You will be fighting sharks and other things in here like jellyfish. So do be aware of those. You are gonna be fighting quite a few creatures down here. That's why we use a Basiliosaurus that's quite strong and tanky and obviously with some levels in it and a good level tamed one, you should be perfectly fine. I've done this a hundred times with, with a Basiliosaurus and I recommend this tame wholeheartedly. You could also use an octopus if you have one, the Tuthosius, if I can even say that word. All right, so we're just swimming along here. We're going to go under this little ridge and this is going to go up. There are also drops in this cave where you can go on foot to collect some drops in case you're looking for some drops, so do have a look around. But you'll see we end up in this big chamber over here and the, the artifact is literally right in the middle over here. This is the artifact of the brute, just chilling there and that's how you get it. For the next artifact, we're doing artifact of the pack at this location right over here. This is what the cave entrance looks like. I'm gonna show you an overview quickly from above. This is probably the one of the harder ones to find because it blends in so easily to its environment over here. Again, it's in trees and everything. I guess the best way to try find it is to kind of know what it looks like from above and fly in from this angle here. And as you see this giant like cliff side, it's on this cliff side here and these rocks indicate where the entrance is. So I hope that helps, otherwise just use a 
GPS. We are using a shotgun here with a flashlight on it, and you are going to need a grapple uh, crossbow and, and grapple hook, and there are insects and stuff in this cave. I do recommend bringing a, a like a megatherium or something for this cave to, to kill everything. You might also need a cryopod or a shotgun because there is a part where we're going to go to another area and you might need to take your dinosaur with you. So when you go in this cave here, we are going to go to the left. By the way, the flashlights and the attachments for the weapons in the game for Nintendo Switch, you have to double tap the Y key to turn on the flashlight of your shotgun or whatever you have it on or whatever weapon. Right now, I'm just using glow sticks to, to kind of lay out the path here. We're just going to basically take every left. You can see there's insects everywhere here. So Megatherium would be great. You'll see here, we're on a ledge here. We don't want to go down there. We want to go across here. So you're going to go across to the left side here. Just follow this ridge across the left here. So it might seem confusing, but once you've done it a few times or you do it once or twice, you'll you'll realize that it's kind of straightforward. We're, we're leading up into a certain point. And once we get to that point, it will make a whole lot more sense. So, so here we're kind of going in in a straight line through all the enemies. This is actually a dead end, by the way, here. So sticking to the left is still the other way, this side here. And we're going to go this way. So through this way over here, I'm just throwing these glow sticks so that you guys can see better because it's quite dark in the cave and the, the flashlight maybe doesn't help too much here. We're going to go left. So left, 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 left. There's only one point where we're going to change the direction and we're going to go right and it is about here. So once you get here, you'll see there are like ruined buildings directly below us. And there's also a, a wandering note that you can get for, um, you know, experience buff and XP notes is what I mean. From this point, you're going to go right. After the XP note, you're going to go right. And this will lead you to this area here. You'll see there's like a whole lakeish thing that we're going to go down to. So follow along here, taking every single right as you go further down. And then you see this, cool. This means you're really, really close. Here you can go to the right, right? So you'll see there's a light from the roof. We're gonna stay on the land. There are some insects and things here you'll need to kill. Uh, mainly the Megalonia are in this cave. Remember that Megalonia, because you're probably gonna need to kill that for one of the bosses later on, because they are, uh, they're gonna drop a tribute item that you're gonna need. So when you get to this point, you'll see that pillar in the distance, that giant pillar that's in front of us, right? So look at this pillar, look to the right, look in the middle, right about over here, right where I'm aiming. To you, it might look like there's nothing there, but we need to grapple and get across there. So. I'm just gonna grapple it here and I'm gonna reach and you'll see there's a sneaky little opening here. So we're gonna go through this little opening and this is where the artifact is, super sneaky. And you're just gonna run up here. Sometimes there are spiders here, so be careful. That's why I say have a shotgun or have something to deal with or like a cryopod to bring your megatherium or something up here to fight. But this is where you're gonna get the artifact of the pack. The next artifact is for the artifact of the Devourer at the top right of the map over here. This one is actually really straightforward, but you might need something like a Rex or something quite strong to deal with some of the, the harder dinosaurs in here. I recommend like a parachute, the crossbow, you know, and a shotgun and, you know, it, pretty much you'll see why, right? There is an underwater section that's going to be super quick. You don't really need to have like a scuba tank. I recommend maybe flippers just so that you can swim under the water fast, right? So we're just going to turn this on here. By the way, again, this is double tap Y to turn on the light on and off. It's, it's really cool. So that's how you use the attachments, by the way. It took me a while to figure it out myself. And what we're going to do is go in this water, and it's a short little swim to the right here. So I'm going to put on flippers so that we swim a little bit faster if you're worried about getting lost or drowning. But really, you're swimming here, and you're swimming directly up. It's just literally like a U-shape. Like in, under, up. Cool. And then you can take it off, put your normal shoes on. Now, the artifact is really easy to find. The problem is, is without a cryopod, it can be really annoying because where the artifact is, is literally below me. So... You can come in like this, or you can use a parachute. You see where that purple glow is? That is where the artifact is. So I'm using the grapples and everything just to get down here. Otherwise, you can basically use like a Rex or something, or a Thylacolio, something along the sides here, just to just to kill the stuff. A bug repellent is great to keep these, these bugs and everything away from you. But ultimately, this is where the artifact is. You just drop down like this if you want, and pick it up, and that's how you get the artifact of the Devourer. 
And now we're looking at the next boss, the Megapithecus. Now this will be done at the blue obelisk at these coordinates over here. So just look for the blue obelisk in the snow biome. It is cold here, so do pack fur armor to keep yourself warm. The dinosaurs we're gonna be using for this fight are one Uteranus and 19 T-Rexes. Generally, there's no real other strategy here for the island map, so this is kind of it. One Uteranus and 19 Rexes. So in order to start this fight on Gamma difficulty, you're gonna use those three artifacts that we just collected, the Brute, Pack, and Devourer. So that's the Gamma difficulty. To start it in Beta difficulty, you're going to need a few more dinosaur parts, like usual, and those are probably ones that you're gonna get from the caves and the, the areas you explore getting the artifacts, so get those dinosaur parts as those same artifacts again. And for alpha difficulty, the hardest difficulty, those dinosaur parts and those amounts with those same artifacts, and that is how we're gonna start the fight. In this one, we're just gonna do it in Gamma to show you how it works. So the strategy for the gorilla boss is super simple. It's basically beat him before he beats you. He has a lot lower HP, so he's gonna be easier and quicker to kill. He just deals a lot more damage, but he's gonna die faster. The scariest or thing that you need to be aware of is that on the right side of me right now, on the right side, there is no protective wall. Your dinosaurs can fall in there and die. So stick along the left as you have all your dinosaurs follow you. Make sure they don't get stuck in the pit on the right. Lead them up slowly. The gorilla is at the top of the stairs. You want to get your dinosaurs just to follow you like this without falling in that pit. If they fall in that pit, they are dead. You want to get them up here and you don't want to fight near the pit because the gorilla does do knockback attacks that can knock your dinosaurs into the pit. So you want to ideally fight the gorilla in this little arena here. The only thing you need to watch out for is when the gorilla picks up a big rock and throws it, you must not be in front of the gorilla. Either way, you shouldn't be in front of the gorilla at all. You should just use your Uteranus and you Courage Roll buff all the T-Rexes, much like I'm doing right now, and you just hope the gorilla dies before your dinosaurs die. I personally think that this is the easiest fight in all of the island bosses. It's usually the easiest for me. N nothing has ever really gone wrong in the gorilla boss fight because my Rexes have always been strong. Now in terms of drops and unlocks, here's what you get for Gamma difficulty. Here are the drops and unlocks for Beta difficulty. And here are the drops and unlocks for Alpha difficulty. And that's pretty much how you beat the boss. This artifact is probably the one I hate getting the most. <laughs> the Artifact of the Cunning. Located at the bottom of the ocean at these coordinates, it's really difficult to find this because the entrance to this cave is so huge you don't even know if you're looking at the entrance to the cave. Now, you can see here I have an octopus, but I can't use this for the duration of this entire cave. So if you are going to bring one, only bring it for the first part. Otherwise, bring a Basiliosaurus and a really good Basiliosaurus because you're going to be fighting some really tough sea creatures in this cave. So as you swim through here, we're just going to go along the, the path here. It's really straightforward. So we're just going to go straight and up until we're going to see a part where we're going to go left. It'll kind of like be where these bridges are. So through here, there are so many dangerous creatures and it's just, it's just insane. As you get through here, you'll see there's like an archway on the left over there. You see that archway? We're going to go over it and left again under the other archway. So there's two big archways next to each other. You're gonna go through it here and immediately to your right, you should see there is like a tech, like column pillar thing, this tech column over here. And you'll see behind it is a hole that goes further into the cave. Now you can see the octopus doesn't fit here. So this is why I recommend bringing a Basiliosaurus. Uh, to be fair, this is the first time I tried bringing an octopus in here in, in, in creative mode. So I didn't know it actually didn't fit. So here, you're going to go through with your Basiliosaurus. You're going to fight a bunch of these creatures. Should be fine up until this point. Just follow this blue light, right? So we're just going to go all the way to the end of this little kind of tunnel, I guess you can call it. You'll see, we'll just go all the way to the end and it will drop down again. This time you're going to go left and follow it to the end over there. You will see there is the artifact of the cunning as well as an explorer note right over there. So this is how you get the Artifact of the Cunning. Good luck, I hope you get it well. To get the Artifact of the Immune, you need to go into the Chitin Cave. Now this cave is known because you can get so much Chitin in here. I recommend you bring a Megatherium, so it's those coordinates. This is what the entrance looks like. It's in the, the Redwoods Forest over here. The best way to find it is when you find this like water thing over here, you'll see as it leads towards the north, it kind of makes like a little pointing part where the water goes up here. Right above the part where the water reaches, it basically has the entrance over here. So it's literally that easy to find it. You can't go into this cave without a gas mask because the, the air is unbreathable. So you need to wear a gas mask throughout this cave. 
and bring something to deal with bugs. You're going to need a megatherium. I recommend bug repellent, antidotes, medical brews, everything. You need that megatherium too. But don't throw it out immediately because there is a size check. So you'll have to make sure you get past a certain point over here. I think it's still up ahead here. As you go in here, you can't really get lost. This goes up to the same point. So I think just beyond here... You throw your Megatherium somewhere here, and then you can start killing all the insects. And we're going to basically go in a straight line. So keep going straight. There's no turns yet. As I said, a bunch of insects. You'll get so much chitin here, especially with the Megatherium, that you'll be like, you'll never need chitin again the first time you come here with the Megatherium. All right. So once you get here and you see water for the first time, you're going to turn left immediately. Turn left. You'll see there's like a tech piece sticking out of the wall. Turn left. Okay. So now you're going to go straight. And basically we're leading towards water again, like another river. But this time you're going to go over it, but towards the the left side. So like kind of like the, the only pathway that's really over it. So this side, so right across. Be careful if you do go in the water, there are leeches. So I recommend don't get attached by one of those because they'll literally stick on your screen and it'll be really annoying. Uh, the, if you do want to get a leech off of you, by the way, you just stand in fire because they, they burn off. Um, either way, follow along here, follow along this path. You'll see there's some eggs. When you see this room here, you're going to take an immediate right. And we're going to go here. There's more water, which means more leeches. So be careful of that. You'll see this eggs and all these things here. Now, these are not these are just decoration, by the way, but there's also red drops in this cave. Run across here and you will see this goes up a very narrow space. And right at the end of this narrow space is the artifact of the immune. You'll see here, nice big red pill looking like artifact you'll see this is what it looks like and that's how you get the artifact of the immune good luck have fun good luck with the chitin the next one is the artifact of the sky lord now this one is a really quick cave but it's also very dangerous located at 1919 this is what it looks like when you come up to it it's in the snow area it is incredibly cold in fact the next two caves are incredibly cold so do be aware you are going to need like a shotgun or something or a dire wolf a really small creature you're going to need uh, med brews you're going to need a crossbow with grapples and some light maybe because well m maybe not so much the light now this cave is a maze, but it's so simple because all you have to do is take every single right turn. So follow the right wall and be careful because there are some turns that are really easy to miss and you don't want to get lost. So follow the right every single time. Just take the right turns as much as you can and it leads straight up to the artifact. So you'll see there's some spiders and some onyx. So you will get like poisoned every now and again if those bats fight you and you will need like a shotgun to, to kill them and fight them. So maybe antidotes is also a good thing to bring. So stick along the wall on the right. You'll see when you get to this little part, there is a ledge. Do, you do not want to fall off here. If you fall off, you will die instantly. This is where you need the grapple hook. So you're going to grapple across. And there's usually spiders and insects right around this corner. So try to bait them out before you like you know see them. You'll see here, there is the artifact of the Sky Lord and a bunch of insects as well. And that's pretty much how you get the artifact. Just take this cave really slowly and carefully, and it will be an easy one. The final artifact cave you need to do is Artifact of the Strong. And this one is the hardest, longest cave and the most frustrating one out of every artifact cave I think I've ever done to this day. Out of all the maps that I've covered and, and done caves for, this one still is a very, very frustrating one. So this is what it looks like when you get it into its entrance, right? You're going to need like... So you're going to need to be really warm because it's really cold in here. So be very careful with the war. You might need to um, have the soup that makes you warm. I think it's Freya curry, if I recall. So as you enter the cave and you stick along the left here, you'll see there is this little ledge over here. Now, I recommend you keep track of where you're going because this cave is really long. I've used glow sticks to take a path of exactly where I've gone. You'll see there are bears in here, which you need to be aware of. There's also perlovia. Now, perlovia look like dirt piles on the ground. And if you get too near them, they will attack you on your dinosaur or whatever you choose to ride in this cave. I recommend bringing like all sorts of things like a thylacolio, uh, maybe a uteranus. A uteranus can encourage raw to get the perlovia love you to pop out the ground because if they catch you on the ground they will dismount you and you will probably die very quickly so as we go along this path here you'll see there's a waterfall that we're jumping down from um, do remember that you came down a waterfall over here so to backtrack that is what a perlovia looks like by the way that little dirt mound on the ground but you're going to follow along the left pathway throughout the majority of the cave 
So you'll see that I basically stay on the left the entire time. It's a simple rule, but it is a confusing cave because it does go up and down, right? So from here, you'll see you can jump in the water and go the long way around, but we're basically going to this point over here, which I'm just going to grapple and get up here. You might also need a pickaxe to get through some of the crystal because crystal might be blocking your path and you can harvest the crystal, by the way. Okay, so we're going to run up this left path. We're going to keep going. You'll see there's all sorts of direwolves, uh, uh, gi gigantopithecuses, you know, Perlovia, those little dirt things on the ground. So it's, this cave's a mess. It's horrible and it's so easy for you to get ambushed and die. And it's so long and it's so easy. And the deeper you go into it, the colder it gets. Again, keep staying to the left over here. Now there's no major turn on the left until we get here. So we're just going, we're just staying to the towards the left. Every single left turn that you can take is what you're going to take. So don't mess it up. When you're leaving the cave, you take every right turn. So you just do the opposite of what we're doing now. So we're going here. You'll see there's some pillars here. I try to jump here. I, I messed up, but it's okay. We're going the same direction, just the side. We're going to have to come down anyway and through the little pathway to the left over here. So through the left, more crystal. You can either harvest it or just do like this with a crossbow and go right over it. The reason my character is pooping so much is that when it gets colder in arc, your character poos more. Interesting. So stick to the left. Stick to the left. I know it's a long cave and trust me, when you're trying to do it legitimately, it becomes even longer. And that's why the cold is probably one of the most dangerous things alongside the Perlovia because they can dismount you the entire time and the cold is gonna drain your health the entire time too. So here you can see the gorilla in the distance. It's just a statue. And the artifact of the strong is literally just right in front of it. And yeah, the hardest part now is that you got to take the artifact and remember how to get out of here. So take every single right on your exit out. And keep in mind that sometimes you went up. So, so just keep that in mind and good luck. And now with those lost four artifacts collected, you can head to the red obelisk at these coordinates over here. This is where you're going to be doing the final boss, the dragon boss. Sorry, it's not the final boss. It's the final of the three bosses. There is a final, final boss. Now, the army I recommend are 19 Therizinos and one Uteranus. Now, the reason why you want to bring Therizinos is that they take less fire damage than carnivores. Because remember, a Therizino is a herbivore, right? So... Using them, you can also put veg sweet vegetable cake in their inventory to heal them over time. So as they take damage, they will eat the cake automatically to heal. Now to start the boss fight in Gamma difficulty, you just need those four artifacts, Cunning, Immune, Skylord, and Strong. And in Beta difficulty, you need those same artifacts as well as some dinosaur pots. You can see you've probably killed a bunch of these already anyway. So go ahead and collect those. For Alpha difficulty, this is the amounts of what you need. It's pretty much the same thing in Beta, just in a higher quantity with the same artifacts. And let's go do it in Gamma difficulty to show you how we do it. Now the strategy for the dragon fight is straightforward but very hard to put into practice a lot of the time because it can get crazy. It basically devolves down to you having full control over your dinosaurs. Now we're riding the Uteranus as usual, which I normally do, and we're going to put the, the Therizinos on follow. And essentially this arena here has a lava pool or a lava strip that goes straight down the middle, as you can see, from one side to the other. Ideally, you do not want your dinosaurs to go into that lava because they will start burning for a certain amount of time and that does percentage-based damage, I believe, to their health bars, which is a lot of damage. At the same time, the dragon spends a lot of time flying, so you've got to be careful because the dragon's flying and it will spit down fireballs. It will also summon Tyranodons to, to fight you, which is like the first time they'll ever actually be aggressive towards you. One strategy you could also try if you are really having trouble is to bring a Stegosaurus because you can ride a Stegosaurus and you can have a shotgun and you can shoot off of its back. There you just saw a fireball hit the dinosaurs. It's really hard to get them to follow me. They, they really sometimes take a while to react. You have to wait for the dragon to land. That That is the, the tough part of this. You have to wait for the dragon to land and you got to make sure that the dragon lands in a place where your dinosaurs are not going to get burned to death. So we're just going to go like this. Uh, they just got hit by the fireball again. Great. Good job, guys. You're, you're doing great. And the dragon needs to land. We just need to wait for it to land and he's going to keep doing fireballs and stuff like this. So the best is if you have other people like a tribe helping you with this, then it's great. 
Otherwise, you just need the dragon to land. <laughs> he, he just never lands, dude. He's, he's worse than the Manticore sometimes. I'm just kidding. The Manticore is... The Manticore boss from Scorched Earth is way more of a big deal. So you can see here, they're going across. Most of them are going into the lava there. It's like, you know, what can I do? Like, it's... This is unfortunately how the fight goes. You just got to make sure you pack sweet veggie cake into all of those Therizinosaurs and you have them as leveled and as best as they can be. And that's 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 just how the fight's going to go. Alternatively, like I said, you can use a Stegosaurus, ride it with a shotgun and shoot the dragon with a shotgun. A really good pump action shotgun can do a lot of damage to the dragon as well. Yeah, also keep in mind the dragon in alpha difficulty has almost a million health. So this is a tough fight. And if you do beat it, you pretty much unlock everything you need for tech engrams and, and tech armor and tech everything. So let's go ahead and skip to the rewards and unlocks. So if you beat the boss in gamma difficulty, these are the unlocks and drops that you will get for beating the boss. If you're beating the boss in beta difficulty, these are the rewards and drops and unlocks. And if you're beating the boss in alpha difficulty, these are the drops and unlocks you will gain. Now that you've beat the three main bosses of the island, you have the option to ascend from the map and go on to Scorched Earth. And this is actually how you beat the map. So at these coordinates, 43, 39, this is the giant volcano roughly in the middle of the map. You've probably seen it before a few times. You collect probably a lot of your metal, crystal, and obsidian all around it a few times throughout the map and throughout your playthrough. You can see it's this it's the big like volcano in the middle. You can't miss it. Right? There is a tech entrance here. This is the tech cave. In order to unlock this cave, you have to use the heads, the trophies of the bosses that you've defeated. So for gamma difficulty or gamma ascension, you just need the gamma heads, just the three gamma head trophies. If you want to do this in beta difficulty, you need to kill some alpha dinosaurs and collect the parts that those alpha dinosaurs drop. In alpha difficulty, it's the same thing. You need the alpha boss heads and some alpha dinosaur parts to open up the cave. Now that just opens up the cave. That doesn't start the fight. Now before you do this, you should know that you have 50 tames that you can bring into this cave. You can bring 50 tames inside this cave. You gotta get them through this door without making them go into the lava of the volcano outside. You also have a time limit. You have five minutes to try bring as many of your dinosaurs into this cave. To do this in single player is really difficult. It's super hard. It's super hard. And throughout this cave, there's gonna be strong dinosaurs everywhere. T-Rexes, Utyranuses, Carnotauruses, pretty much everything that is going to be annoying to find. Allosauruses, right? You only need 20 for the boss fight at the end. You can only take 20 dinosaurs into any boss fight for that matter. But you can have 50 in this cave. And the reason why you have 50 is because you have to fight everything here all the way towards the, the tech part of the cave. So I'm going to speed this up a bit here, but basically you're following along the paths, taking every single lift that you can down this whole way it, 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 you might get lost, but once you're in the cave, it's fine. You don't have a time limit that's running out besides bringing your dinosaurs into the cave. So you can take your time traversing, killing everything, letting your dinosaurs heal until you get to this part of the cave, the tech part of the cave. And this will lead to a terminal button where you just have to press the button. So be careful. Don't press the button. Don't press it yet. When you press the button, the boss fight starts. So make sure you have your 20 dinosaurs all around you that you want to take into the final boss of the island map, the Overseer. The Overseer boss. Now before you even think of doing this Overseer boss, it, you need to make sure your dinosaurs have mutations. I do have a guide on how to mutate your dinosaurs and get better stats on them that you can check on the screen right now and in the description because this fight is almost impossible otherwise. Now the boss looks like the thing that is in your arm and it will spawn different tech like, you know, drones and things to fight you. It will also turn into robotic versions of the Broodmother, Dragon and Megapithecus to fight you. So do a lot of research, make sure your dinosaurs are the strongest they will ever be in their entire lives because this fight is no joke. It is a tough one and it's very easy to get confused and lost in between the madness of everything. But when you do beat the fight, you will get some amazing rewards. Let's talk about that. If you ascend in gamma difficulty, you'll get the gamma implant and you'll also get five levels increased to your maximum level. If you ascend in beta, you will get the beta implant as well as a maximum of 10 levels increased to your level. 
And if you ascend in alpha difficulty, you'll get the alpha implant. It even shows the color on your arm, which is really cool, as well as the tech ATV item that you can unlock the engram to craft a tech ATV, which is pretty neat. This will also unlock an extra 15 maximum levels that you can unlock for your character. Now this does include the levels you get from beta and gamma. So it's a maximum of 15 if you do alpha. There's also an ending cinematic that I don't want to spoil. So finish it yourself and, and see what it says. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.